What is happening, Cryptosomniacs? How is everybody doing? Today is Wednesday, November 28th, and uh, let's go ahead and take a look at what's going on with the news. Uh, Bitcoin has pumped a little bit today, and uh, uh, people have been reaching out to me asking, is, the, is this the turnaround or is this a bull trap? Um, so yeah, we'll go ahead and take a look at that, see what I think, and uh, take a look at some of the other news right here on Cryptosomniac. Stay tuned. <laughs> All right, how is everybody doing today? Um, looking like it's a slow day over here. No, no chatters in the chat so far. Um, there we go. What's happening, Ahmed? How are you doing? You made it first today, right on, my man. Number one fan. <laughs> Appreciate you showing up, man. How, how are you doing today? Are you very excited about this uh, 4100 pump? Lolita, hello again. Good to see you again, two days in a row. Thanks for coming again. Um, how are you guys doing today? Everybody, uh, everybody holding firm amidst this... Uh, Oh, oh, nice one, Rex. Hey, shout out, man. Thanks for giving me the first upvote. While we're on the subject, anybody who's watching, just go ahead and smash that thumbs up while you're at it. Uh, always appreciate it very much. And uh, appreciate you guys being here to hang out. But uh, yeah, 100%. That's, uh, I think you have the, the right of it there, Amit. Um, let's go ahead and, and take a look at it, right? Let's just take a look at what has happened here in the market. Okay, so uh, my computer is uh, loading a little slowly here, but uh, Bitcoin dominance does still remain high, 53%. Um, that's been pretty standard for some time now. Uh, pretty good 24-hour volume, not fantastic, but definitely up. And the market cap has risen roughly about 10 billion in the last 24 hours. Uh, so that's pretty good. Uh, I believe it was about 126 yesterday when we were looking. So uh, it's about 136 today. So that's, that's pretty good. Uh, some money coming back into the market. Is it real? Um, is this the uh, is this the run? Is this the time where we take off? Well, let's uh, let's find out. Um, first of all, yeah, to say we found the bottom, to say we found the bottom in less than a month will be a big joke, says Ahmed. Yeah, I mean that's realistically it bounced us around six k for quite a long time. So um, I'm not uh, I, I'm not very confident that this is going up. So just so you guys know, I'm not very confident. Uh, I still think was going to break down, but. Um, anyway, let's, uh, let's go ahead and jump over and take a look at it. So, um, yeah, as we can see here, uh, still moving through this order block that we had outlined. Um, I thought this was honestly going to go up and double top off of this, uh, this line right here at about 4,074 and it just blew right past it. So, um, I think this is going to pump a little bit and, uh, give me a chance to make up some of the difference on that bag that I'm holding for 5,800 the other day. Um, but I do fully expect it to continue to go down and uh, I've got buys sitting down in the next order block um, because I like to be a, a market maker. So <laughs> when you have buy orders in, you're a market maker. Anyway, um, let's see, what else? Roll, roll Tide says Damien W. Yeah, I mean, hey, let's let's hope. I mean, this is, look at it. We're looking at the other hourly right here. Um, you know, this did, form a little falling wedge and then started to take off again. Looks like this is a shooting star pattern is what it looks like. So I fully expect this to, to break back down here. I could be wrong, but um, that's on the one hour time frames. Ultimately, as we say, guys, the larger time frames really are what supersede the smaller time frames. And does this really look very bullish to you so far? You know, that's, this is, I mean, does this, does this look very bullish? This, so do you guys see, here, let me try and brighten this up on my screen. Um, do you guys see this blue dashed line here going up? This is our long-term downtrend, or rather, I'm sorry, our long-term uptrend, like forever uptrend. Uh, see that as I go all the way back out into history? And uh, we crashed right into it and bounced right off it. So I will be watching to see if it can, you know, what's going to happen again. Is it going to break and bounce off this again? Um, I wish I'd have drawn that long-term line uh, a little bit sooner and seen how well it lines up with the bottom of this order block because uh, <laughs> boy, I would have been a lot more likely to put in some buy orders there in anticipation, but I didn't see that until this morning. So, um, I mean, yeah, this is starting to look like an engulfing candle on the daily. That's true, but it's not quite, right? I mean, the wick didn't quite supersede that. I mean, it's, it's definitely gone past the last uh, three days. 
but um, we still haven't gone back into that bullish territory yet. Although I do like this, I like what I'm seeing on the volume, overall increase on the volume on the daily. Um, although it was a little bit bearish two days ago, uh, we've still seen an increase in bullish volume in the last 48 hours. So um, that is a confidence builder. Turn on the volume, I can do that, yeah. Check, 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 one, two, one, two, one, two, better? <laughs> Uh, okay, yeah, I think, there we go. Turn up, who's hollering it? Damien, for saying Roll Tide? Isn't that like a, I don't know, I thought that was like an Alabama football thing. I assumed. I, <laughs> yeah, I didn't use my crypto AK case, that's for Oz, what's up, man? <laughs> uh, Monero, Dinero, that is the greatest. I love that title, I love, or I love that handle, it's great. Yeah, so um, anyways, guys, I think this is, I, I really think this is a bull trap. Um, but, you know, uh, if you were a gambler, definitely there was some money to be made today. Bitcoin up 10% um, versus USD today. ETH up 8%. XMR up 10%. So, uh, you know, ultimately, guys, this is what they say. When everybody's fearful, these are the times to buy. Um, I'm just starting to think that maybe I should... Uh, uh, heighten up. I've been playing, you know, I've been playing at the bottom of the current order block and I think maybe I should start to play at the top of the next order block just to see if I can catch a bounce on the next breakdown. I still think it's going to break down further. Yeah, could could go to 4900. I think we're going to have a very difficult time getting past that. Uh, we just passed the what I thought was going to be resistance that had been like three days worth of resistance. So we passed up that at around, uh, what was that, like 40... Yeah, just a little bit, 40, 40, 80 roughly. Uh, so passed up that, and our next resistance is going to be coming up there at about 4380 roughly. Um, and so if we can get past those, maybe we'll go back up and test that 5K mark, maybe. But um, I'm not confident in it. Yeah, I'm not confident in it. So... Um, that's like, like I said, I put buys in down in the 2K range today, um, just in case. But who knows? You know, I was I was wrong yesterday. I thought we were going to see further breakdown overnight. So uh, could be could be uh, could be the turnaround, but I don't think so. I think this is a bull trap. I'm pretty confident this is a bull trap. Get some Monero if you like Monero. <laughs> yeah, hilarious. Um, I just like get some Monero if you like your privacy. Is what I say. Um, yeah. Okay. Well, anyways, uh, so here's, I, I saw something last night that really, really pissed me off. Um, I'm an American citizen and, uh, you know, it's funny. I've, I've realized how they use credit here in America. I don't know about the rest of the world, but they use credit to bludgeon you into all kinds of things. So your credit score will affect your job, uh, your, your, your job prospects, your likelihood to be able to get a home, um, all kinds of things all the way down to, um, uh, what kind of, uh, I mean, it's, it's, it's going so far beyond just actual financial uses and starting to be used as a judge of character. Um, I've heard of different groups starting to go in and, and uh, check through your social media. Anyways, I'm getting, I'm, I'm diverging. My point is this, um, for a government that is so concerned with its citizens being accountable and paying their taxes and following the law, this really, really pissed me off. So uh, let's, let's load this up here and... Um, so this really isn't necessarily crypto related, but this is what I see as one of the reasons that we need blockchain so badly in this world. Um, so the, the Pentagon has been committing massive accounting tax fraud. So I don't know if you guys remember way back in like 2003, 2004, uh, there was $12 billion sent from the United States to Iraq that was supposed to be used for various recovery efforts uh, post, uh, post initial war and uh, nine billion of that twelve billion just went missing, just gone, right? So that uh, that has already that's that's been sticking in the back of my mind for for quite some time as a as a <laughs> just a real sticking in my craw. I'm not not a big fan of it. And then uh, what I see here is I found this thing that the Pentagon has effectively. So uh, uh, the short version of it is, and uh, I am no expert on this. I should just uh, say this up front. But as I understand it. Um, there's a different, when the Pentagon gets funded, they're getting funded with uh, one-year money, five-year money, et cetera, et cetera. So the, the buckets of funds that they are given are uh, encoded with different stipulations, meaning fi like within, for one-year finances, they have to give whatever is unspent back to the country at the end of the, um, 
at the end of the term. Uh, Five-year money, they don't have to give it back whatever is unspent at the end of five years and they can put it back in the coffer. So effectively, what our fine government has been doing is uh, what they call nippering and uh, what was the other term that they used? Uh, basically what they're doing is they're taking the one-year money and they are washing it into the five-year pile so that they don't have to give it back. Then the next year, they say, look, we spent our entire budget, continue to inflate the budget, get an increased budget from Congress. Congress takes more taxpayer dollars and, and gives it to these people. And basically, effectively, they're just continuing to extract value from the taxpayers without actually, uh, you know, I mean, they're just spending it willy-nilly. And, and especially when it's the Pentagon, listen, I like the fact that we are a well-defended nation. Not a big fan of the fact that we are also kind of world police, a.k.a. bullies, um, but I do like the fact that we have a strong military. That being said, our military spending so far out exceeds the rest of the world uh, that we could stop for some time, and I still don't think the rest of the world would catch up. So with that on the table, why aren't they using blockchain for accounting in this? This is, seriously, I say this all the time. I hate paying taxes, but I pay my taxes because I don't want to go to jail. I hate it because I don't have any say in it effectively. Um, taxation without representation, well, the representatives that we have don't really represent us anymore. Uh, they represent special interest groups, and, uh, but I pay my taxes because I don't want to go to jail. So my biggest thing with paying taxes is I'm always like, hey, you know, I would be, you could, if, you know, depending on what brackets you get into, uh, they take different percentages of your money. And I would be a lot more happy with them taking chunks of my change uh, if I could see where it's going at least see where it's going. I would much more like to say I, and allocate where it's going. Watch how quick the infrastructure in this com in this country gets fixed when the people that drive on the roads every day are saying, nope, we want money to go to the roads and infrastructure. We want money to go to the bridges. Watch how much better the schools get when the people that are dealing with these terrible school districts are like, nah, we don't want to spend money funding uh, you know, uh, wars and other things. We want to spend money f funding our future here in, the, in America. So, uh, And being able to have the accountability that comes along with blockchain, this is the future that I see. Um, this is the future, and this is why I'm part of this space in the first place. So anyway, the, the, you can read this article. I'll post the link to this article. It's not really crypto-related, but if you want to get <laughs> angry at the American government and the way that it operates, uh, you can feel free to read through it. I will, uh, I will post this in the uh, stream comments or in the uh, – uh, yeah. In fact, yeah, why don't I just post it in the uh, chat? So here, if anybody wants to read that later, you can check that out. Uh, so anyways, I, I was just super pissed about this because this is exactly the reason that I think we see uh, a need for blockchain technology, specifically at the governmental level. So, um, all right, what else? Um, I, I don't know how we'll implement it. I think they're still too afraid of it for the near term, but um, as understanding grows, hopefully so will the adoption. And, and uh, you know, as, as regular level-headed people that just want the world to move forward in a positive manner, start to understand the value of this. Hopefully we start to get to see it implemented in uh, use cases where it could be purposeful, like voting or paying my taxes or, uh, you know, uh, uh, watching the accounting of our government so we can actually tell where our tax dollars are going. All of these sound like great use cases for the blockchain to me. All right, so let's see. Yeah, just business. CIA and Pentagon have been doing this shit forever. Yeah, that's fine. Do you, are, is that okay? Like, yeah, it just just because something has been done a certain way for a long time, does that make it okay to always do it that way? I'm confused. Because I'm pretty sure we don't talk. Language evolves over time. Laws evolve over time. We evolve over time. Like, that's, they were doing it because they could get away with it and nobody said anything about it. Now it's become apparent. We're aware of it. What are we going to do about it? I don't know. That's that's the thing. Are enough people going to be upset about this kind of thing that we are going to actively do something about it? I don't know. I don't know. I would really like to see some sort of uh, peaceful revolution happen in the United States, some sort of peaceful revolution where um, we could stop letting assholes run the show uh, and, and, and you know maybe put a little bit more care for other people into it. Just a little bit. There's, there's very little right now in business, so just a little bit would be good. All right, let's see. What else? Can't be a bull trap if you scale out of it, says Rex. Yes, uh, I'm going gonna, I'm gonna to butcher that last name. Dacier? Hopefully I said it right, Rex. Um, various recovery efforts equals building up terror groups. 
Just business. Yeah, building out. I, I see. You're referring to the CIA and Pentagon. Yes, that's what they do. Um, so in the happy news, uh, let's get over to let's get back to legit crypto. So I uh, saw this one today. This is actually pretty sweet. Um, Coinbase has launched an OC, OTC trading trading desk for institutional investors. So um, they want it to be a complement to the exchange. Ultimately, uh, I think realistically, they are just they have enough liquidity to be able to hopefully entice some institutional investors into the market at uh, reasonable rates rather than the premium or spot market buys that they would have to get going through um, going through the exchange. So uh, pretty interesting to see, but looks like um, it's got web interfaces for Skype, Bloomberg, uh, Bloomberg email, and phone. Um, and the, the name of it's going to be Coinbase Prime. So um, Coinbase is one of the few registered broker dealers in crypto in the United States, another of which being Monarch Token. Um, but uh, these guys could really go on to become a, a serious powerhouse in this space, depending on how quickly traditional finance moves into this space. Uh, obviously, they're a massive powerhouse right now, but you know they could go forward to being a, a NASDAQ as far as uh, digital assets go. So it will be interesting to see. In other positive news, even though everybody's talking about ETH being dead, uh, ETH did deploy 11 new dApps on their blockchain, and some of them do actually have some transaction volume. Uh, it looks like one, two, three, four, five of them or so. Not a huge amount of transaction volume, but pretty good. Um, unfortunately, it looks like the majority of them are gambling games, uh, or at least the dice to win and, uh, yeah. Well, anyway, um, the good news is, what do we say? It's, it's time for cars to get built to drive on these roads. Well, people are finally starting to put out some of these cars. And, you know, ultimately, if a gambling dap is a is a dap and it works, then it's, it's not the that's not the exact direction I want to see it going. But if a gambling dap does uh, end up getting more people to start using cryptocurrency, then I suppose that is is potentially uh, <laughs> a good thing in the future. Um, so this was uh Another thing this is talking about is, you know, EOS already has 179 dApps on it, um, and Tron only having 14. Um, EOS, there is a lot of talk of junk transactions happening on EOS, though. So um, they are saying that perhaps maybe some of the dApps that are functioning on the EOS blockchain um, don't quite have the volume that it appears that they have. Uh, I don't know. I, I have to do some more digging on that before I can... Um, say that with any sort of authority, but that's, I've read some things here and there about that. So uh, anyway, um, let's see. And then in other positive news, uh, the last bit that I have here is, oops, let's close that. Uh, I'm a big fan of this. Uh, Bitcoin, the most secure transaction settlement layer in the world, is still the world's best performing asset over the last 10 years. So um, pretty, pretty strong. Um, Overall, you know, and it's, it's, I saw another thing today, uh, looking over trading view, there was a number of people saying that, you know, the last big retrace was about 45%. This has been about 45%. A lot of people calling for bull, uh, bull market here, but I would be very cautious guys. I would be very cautious. Um, but that being said, um, you know, clearly, clearly in the pump from what J July to December, that was an unsustainable run up. That was all of us being very excited and, and, uh, enjoying how every day you would uh, buy a small amount of Bitcoin and it'd be worth more by the time you got home from work. Um, regardless, still the most uh, blockchain still never been hacked, and it is still, uh, like I said, it is still the most secure transaction settlement layer in the world. So it's not the fastest, but it is the most robust. And um, hopefully, we will see. You know, as as we go down, I still think there's further downside for Bitcoin to go, um, but you know, I think. Realistically, we're down to exclusively the strong hands in this market at this point, or the true believers. Uh, you know, there's probably a ton of people that bought that are upside down that are just believers that are still staying in the market. Um, so time will tell. I think uh, realistically, uh, the 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 order block that's happening between now and about 2800 that will determine which way the market goes. Um, I think for a significant portion of next year. Um, so we'll see what happens over the next month or so. Um, but overall, still still quite a lot of positive news happening in the space. And, uh, you know, Bitcoin's up from 37 to 41. Oh, look at that. 
yeah, it looks like we might be going out to retest that candle at the uh, 43. So here's what I would say. If you did catch on this bounce, unless this is Bitcoin, you're looking, if you're just looking to increase your, uh, your stack a little bit, I might place a sell order by 43.82 and then wait for it and pick back up back down here and just see if the see if it comes to you. Um, all right, let's see. Um, doo -doo -doo -doo. The day is not far when your credit score is not good. They're gonna deny you coffee. Yeah, that's probably accurate, man. Always. Um, hold on a second, and I will I will actually answer that question, Monero Dinero. Um, you know, I, I think it is a fair, Justin Sun is the protege of Jack Ma. Jack Ma is one of the most successful business people in the world, definitely in China. Um, Justin Sun is his protege. So Justin Sun is exceptionally good at marketing. Tron, it has some advantages. I mean, you know, it, it does have some advantages. Being compatible with the Ethereum virtual machine is pretty strong. Um, owning BitTorrent is pretty strong, and you know, just you can't, you cannot deny that Justin Sun is good at marketing. So, um, yeah, I think realistically, I mean, I've rode the Tron train several times. I do not hold any right now. I definitely would buy it again, but um, not at the moment. I just, I, I'm, I'm, I've pared down my alt stack a lot. That being said, um, I think Tron is probably realistically. Uh, a viable contender, as as viable a contender in this space as as anything else serious right now. Okay, um, let's see. Let me scroll back up here. Peaceful says Jizzy Matt. Hey, listen, dude. I don't want an armed revolution. I don't want a war. I don't want a civil war. I don't want any of that. I, I don't. I mean, like, I don't want. I I don't want war. Period. I want. I want people to just be like, okay, man, that's, it's never going to happen. What I want and what's reality are totally different things. But. Uh, that's, that's what I want to happen. I would, what's up, Rocket Fuel? Critical Kool-Aid. I live in Zen Zealand, and we don't have an army, and we have a board with a nail in it. You know what, dude? That's the great thing about New Zealand is they don't bother anybody, so nobody hates them. Now, have you ever met anybody that's like, I hate those New Zealanders? Maybe Aussies? I don't know. Uh, I know there's a lot of um, jawing back and forth, but I don't know if it's actually like uh, national rivalry or whatever. Um, but nobody hates New Zealanders, and how could they? They're some of the nicest people I've ever met. Not that I've met a ton, but some of the nicest people I've ever met. And uh, it's gorgeous there. Honestly, I, if I was from New Zealand, I'd just stay there. <laughs> I'd just stay there because I think you guys are uh, doing some correct things down there. Why doesn't the government just make one tax to all? It's really confusing and complicated, the system. They make it that people that make a mistake and end up making paying more in fines, says Amit. So, again, get out your tinfoil hat, guys, but... Uh, uh, I, I, I would posit to you that that is a feature, not a bug, <laughs> right? They design the tax, the tax the way it is so that there are loopholes at different levels. And ultimately, the more money you have, the better chance you have of being able to afford somebody who knows who those, where those loopholes are. <laughs> Arden says, legit crypto, you mean there are shit coins? <laughs> yeah, a few, a few. Let's see. Uh, let's go on over back to the, the exchange page real quick here and let's see, uh, 2074. So there's about, um, 2060 some odd shit coins. <laughs> uh, okay. All these dApps are garbage, maybe, but if they work, then they work, right? That's ultimately it. It's, I, we've got to get dApps that work moving forward until we can get dApps that are actually worth using, right? Do you guys remember CompuServe? It sucked, but the internet is fantastic today. Keep that in mind, guys. There is there is definitely a, uh, a parallel between how quickly investors get interested in a thing and then, you know, there's, or should I say, a perpendicularity probably, how quickly investors can get interested in, in a thing and then, you know, how quickly the, the companies can actually build the things that they're trying to build. All right, let's see. What else? Yes, Lolita says, don't forget to hit, don't forget to hit the likes. I would say so. Smash up the likes if you do enjoy the content. I certainly appreciate you guys being here and watching with me. Um, and uh, I do love sharing this knowledge with you every day. So uh, thank you so much for watching. And do please smash up those likes and uh, hit the thumbs up, hit the bell so that you know when we go live. Always appreciate it, guys. And a uh, bunch of friends over here. Um, let's see. What do you think about Substratum? I like Substratum as a project. I like any MeshNet project as a concept. Um, so... 
I have reached out to the Substratum guys a couple of times trying to get them to come on the channel for an interview and have had no success doing so. Uh, but I'm interested in the project, and I know we have some members of the Moon Lounge who are also very interested in the project. Um, specifically, Hui is a fan of it, and uh, you know I think MeshNet is a is a solid um, a solid use case for blockchain, especially as net neutrality has been repealed, and uh, we we run the risk of draconian restrictions uh, by our government. Where is the coffee? That's a good question. I gotta go get coffee. Um, I did not have any today. I am, uh, <laughs> yeah. I've been uh, I've been remote for this is my third week remote. Uh, I'll be heading back to LA next week. Um, just been spending some time with my family for some personal stuff, and um, yeah. Anyway, uh, so hopefully the uh, the stream quality will improve. Sorry, this has been you know I'm kind of see through and looking funky and and uh, whatever, but ho hopefully the stream quality will get a little bit better as of next week. And, um, yeah, that's, uh, that's about it. Thanks for grinding. Hey man, I'm here to, here to grind. That's what I'm, me too. I want all kids to have a puppy. <laughs> uh, Zill going to pay the bills. Zillica is one I've definitely got my eye on. Not touching it right now, but Del Zill is definitely one I've got my eye on. Um, hold on. If the Satoshi value of Bitcoin goes up, then the Satoshi... What? All right. I'm sorry, dude. First of all, the Satoshi value of Bitcoin can't go up. The Satoshi value of Bitcoin. I'm confused by your question. S Bitcoin, dollar, Satoshi, cents. Or um, if you're British, Bitcoin, pound, Satoshi, pence. Right? I think that's the unit. And uh, I haven't, I, I don't know too much about other monies, but <laughs> it's the Satoshis are the subsection of a full Bitcoin. So I'm not quite sure what your question is stating. I think what you're saying is if the USD value goes up, then the Satoshi value of the parent coin goes up. Yes, uh, generally, because everything is basically pegged to Bitcoin, right? Bitcoin is the alpha of this market. If Bitcoin goes up, so do the altcoins, generally. There are a few exceptions. There are some things that have been trying to decouple. Ripple had tried to decouple. Ether had tried to decouple. Um, there's been a few, but most of them have been unsuccessful in doing so. By and large, Bitcoin still controls the fate of the entire market. So, yeah, wow, look at that. Bitcoin back at 4,200. Let's look at this on smaller intervals. Yeah, that buy pressure is looking good. Buy pressure is looking good. Don't FOMO, though, guys. Don't FOMO. Don't, uh, you know, again, whenever it's on a run, wait for it to pull back. If you are insisting on buying Bitcoin today, that is, uh, that is my suggestion. Um, never buy at all time high. And obviously this is an all time high, but when we've seen it, you know, peak off of this once, twice, three times, and then four, it went past it. I mean, this would have been a triple top. I would have actually expected this to break. I think we got a whale in the market today playing the fool is what I think. I think we got somebody just trying to slap the price around, get a bunch of people to FOMO in so they can dump it again. That's that's what I think might be happening today. Um, but hey, Bitcoin's going up. We're all happy, right? Uh, okay, I see what you're saying. Um, I think, yeah, if Bitcoin drops and alts don't, then the Satoshi value of the alt goes up. Uh, correct, right? Um, hold on, let me think about that. If the USD value goes down... Bitcoin, no, 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 it doesn't. If Bitcoin's price goes down, Bitcoin's price goes down, thus the Satoshi value of other alts tend to follow it down. So yeah, I, that's in my experience. Um, Jason, do you hold any civic bags? I sure do. I've, I have a very, very tiny civic bag. Um, yeah, and I wish I would have sold it already. <laughs> so I'm just gonna hold on to it. Um, you know, I've as as somebody who has been the victim of identity theft, I thought identity verification on the blockchain would be a very solid use case for it. But unfortunately, uh, it just hasn't. You know, we had a lot of great ideas that were if everybody was already living in a cryptocurrency world would have been solid business models and skyrocketed and gone forward. But unfortunately, we got a lot of great ideas that a lot of people are like. We can get it to here, and now we got to get people to actually use this stuff. Um, Civic being one of those, in my opinion. 
So while I do like the overall concept, any of them, any of these KYC type, you know, any of these, any of these identity verification on the blockchain type projects, I, I like the prospects of it. I like the uh, concept of it, but so far in execution, uh, the only ones that would really have a, a use case right now are turning out to be the ones that are trying to be KYC for other blockchain, you know, uh, like ICOs and things like that. So anyway. Yeah, me too. Says Beth Manhattan now. Yeah, yeah. That's. I mean, you know, guys. That's. It, there was a lot of things. I thought uh, Lisk is another one. I thought Lisk was a fantastic idea to be able to make it to where traditional devs could automatically start working on the blockchain. I thought was a, a pretty solid thing that could help drive adoption and just has it. Um, I should say while we're while I'm talking about Lisk though, um, they they did just release their roadmap update. So if you are so interested in that project and you want to take a look at it, um, go check it out. Um, Lisk, Lisk did just release their roadmap, so um, follow them on Twitter or, or uh, just go over to their website and check it out if you're still interested. Guys, believe in Icon. Hmm. I do not hold any Icon. I have never held any Icon, and I have no plans to hold any Icon. That being said, uh, I haven't really looked at it a lot, to be honest with you. I, I just haven't really looked at it a lot, so I, I don't have an opinion. Do you like track? Sure do, sure do. And um, yeah, in fact, I would love to get those guys back on. We had them on for an interview earlier this year. Um, Mainnet going live, I should actually reach out to them and see if they would like to come on and chat about it. Um, but yeah, I do still like track. Again, I think supply chain dynamics, one of the best use cases for blockchain technology, especially in its stage right now, where you know, it's, when they're running through and ships are sitting in port and things like that, where they track these items, uh, it's not on an instantaneous uh, time frame need, meaning you know you don't need these rapid, rapid transaction times, um, you know, to scan the sensors on a shipping container that's sitting in a port or whatever. So I think that's cool. I also think that it's uh, you know hopefully the Origin Trail they've specifically gone after food manufacturers. You know, with as many problems as we've had here with romaine lettuce and uh, contaminated uh, farm food in general. I think we have a solid shot at a use case here in the United States for something like that. So I hope that they can start making some inroads. Not happy if it goes up when people sold at 39. Um, yeah, well, you know, I mean, just some of these blockchain ideas are, yeah, there's a whole lot of bullshit in the space. Whole lot. I mean, that's why I said, guys, like, <laughs> we have 2,074 cryptocurrencies currently in the market. Of that, probably 10 are worth anything. Maybe, maybe 15 realistically um all right guys that's pretty much it for me today anything you guys want to see i'll be happy to chart something real quick if you're interested again i do say that until bitcoin starts to behave beware of the alt but uh if any that if there's anything any of you guys want me to take a look at otherwise uh i'm gonna get out of here for the day and uh hopefully snake will be on later tonight wabi v chain sure i'll take a look at uh i'll take a look at v chain just because i know i've got it in here that there we go gvt chart oh you're right i do faraz you're right i'll chart gvt for you dude so yeah i will do that oof that looks like a lot of uh it looks like a uh, it's manipulated is what that looks like i just don't like it i don't like it when a chart has this when the when the candles look this squared off like, this just looks like a bot is manipulating this price to me um, so, yeah, I mean, honestly, guys, I don't, I'm not getting involved in V chain, one chain, any of them. <laughs> I'm, not, I'm not getting, I'm not getting involved in any of those at the moment, but I do think the the use case is good. I mean, there's, there's just been too much, you know, after the whole Chico crypto story came out about them, et cetera, et cetera. I'm hands off on both these projects for the time being and just let the dust settle. Um, but I mean, Realistically, you could just play this off the candles if you're trying to pick some up. You know, if you wanted to, I'd, I'd look to put a buy in there like uh, 111 sats up to about 113 sats, and I'd look to close out of that order, laddering out, starting at like 120, and have exited by 128.
that's probably a huge amount of. Uh, that's only 11%. So, yeah, chance for like an 11% gain. Um, and then I would just set the super tight stop loss on that. Set the stop loss at like, you know, if you get in at that 110 range, then set the stop loss at like between 100 and 5, something like that. Depends on your depends on your risk reward. Better to sell TD9 on the four hour setting. Hold on, hold on, hold on. Better to sell on a TD9 on the four hour setting or make a stop loss. That's entirely up to you, my friend. That is entirely up to you. Um, yeah, I mean, that's, it, it's, listen, I make trades when I feel like I see the trade there to be made, right? So uh, I sometimes I'm right, sometimes I'm wrong. I bought some Bitcoin at 5,800 the other day and I'm still holding on to it. Um, you know, I was hoping for it to fall all the way down to 3,100. It did not. I had some buys down there. I have since canceled those and put the buys down in lower because I think this is a bull trap. I think this 4,300, I think, is going to break. I still think it's a, I think it's a, a trap. But we'll see. See what happens when it gets to this. Uh, if it can pass the uh, 4,400, then maybe I'm wrong. Anyways, um, all right, yeah, I still have Faraz, GVT. Let's look at that. Boy, they're probably, uh, yeah, that's down significantly from the run-up before their mainnet launch, huh? What's happening, Green Zen? Yeah, GVT is a sick um, idea overall, I think. It's a great plan. Oof, boy, that is brutal. Um, same thing, guys. Realistically, I'd be looking to enter orders down somewhere in this order block, right? Somewhere between four dollars and sixteen cents, and four dollars and sixty cents, roughly. Uh, sorry, I have only GBT USD up here right now. I could do it in Satoshi's if you want. Pivx fork. I think Pivx is a scam coin, so I'm not going to look at that. <laughs> um, yeah, I, I I don't like Pivx. I, I think, I think, it's just my opinion, it's just my opinion, but I'm not looking at it. Um, all right, yeah, so GBT, yeah, that's, that's what I would say, you know, it's, look to enter somewhere down in this order block, somewhere between 410, 460, and look to get out by, uh, between like 480 and current price level. That's how I would play that. Um... And let's see, we'll do, we'll do one more here. Well, let's look at, uh, oh, I don't think, I don't think track is on here. I think track is only on Coinigy. Yep, bummer. All right, what about Wabi? Let's take a look at Wabi for you guys. I know this is one that um, I never even bothered to look into this one, particularly because Sam and Snay interviewed these guys and said they were unimpressed and that was good enough for me. So I don't really know much about the Wabi project, to be honest with you, other than uh, just w watching a few videos. But um, I do know that they're about to go through a rebrand. And, and the price is held up decently over the last... Couple months. I don't know. Took a nice dip on this last little crash, but it's come back up. I mean, you're. Here's what I would say. Let me start from here, and we'll go to here. Whoops. My fib. What the heck? Oh, help if I actually. Yeah. Where did, where's the, where's the setting? Oh, there we go. There we go. Okay. Oops. Hold on. Sorry about that, guys.
There we go. Okay. Um. Yeah, I mean, Wabi right now is in that trade zone where I would like to pick it up. So I would say it's anywhere between 3180 and 35, 31. And then I'd start to look to get out of it by 37, 38. And again, get out by the current price. <laughs> So, all right. I think that's that. I think that's that, guys. Is Neo Tech solid? Uh, I think Neo Tech is is potentially solid. I don't like that Neo is not divisible. Um, yeah. <laughs> oh no. Oh, guys, don't just buy stuff because I say things. Don't do that. Um, yeah, don't do that. Do some research. Make sure that you feel. Uh, Oh, I just, honestly, I don't know why a fork of Pivx. I just thought Pivx was a scam when I read about it first. I thought it seemed like a scam coin. Um, we have a full report on it in the CryptoSomniac Advantage. So um, it just seemed, there was, I, I can't even remember off the top of my head, but there was some things, there was some definitely some red flags with the team. There was some red flags with um, some of their social marketing. I, I can't remember exactly. I'd have to pull up the report. But um, I do remember at the time that uh, I thought Pivx seemed pretty scammy to me. Um, Tell you what, guys, I'll read the report tonight, and I'll report back on that again tomorrow because uh, I, I definitely want to uh, make sure I'm speaking from an educated place. I, it's, it's hard to remember everything when I study so much in this space. But, um, yeah, I will, um, I'll definitely look into it, and, and I will let you know. And uh, with that, guys, um, Divisible Neo makes gas less valuable. Yes, it does. But um, what happens when they start making derivative products? Uh, you know, it's the same... It's the same problem. It's like if you can only send one Neo, but the derivative product is worth uh, a Neo and a half, you're going to pay two Neo for a Neo and a half worth of stuff, right? That's, that's a problem. So we'll see what happens. Anyways, um, yeah, smash the thumbs up if you enjoy the content. If you haven't done so yet, feel free to uh, hit that little bell so that you know when we go live. And also, if you're interested, what our group is like, join the CryptoSomniac Advantage, guys. We'd love to have you as part of the group. Um, you can sign up. Right now, just go over to cryptosomniac.com and click the little rocket there, and uh, it will take you over, and you can get signed up. Um, you would have access to all of our different reports that we put out. Um, well, let's see if I can find the Pivx one real quick. Mm. I'm going to have to dig for it, but anyways, as you can see, tons of reports in there. Um, and uh, uh, those are the type of detailed reports that we've been doing. Um, we keep some specifically back for the advantage. We do put some stuff on the uh, on the, the main page. So if you want to see kind of what these reports look like, you can go over to our cryptocurrency reports and see um, the whole selection there. Um, so feel free to check those out. Ripple versus Stellar. That's if you want to know why I'm such a, a Stellar fan versus Ripple. There's a full write up there in, in that. And um, you guys can have access to all that as part of the CryptoSomniac Advantage. We would love to have you as part of our community. So in addition to all that, you also get access to our Discord Lounge, which this is where the real cool stuff is. Um, you know, look at, I mean, we've had a number of people sign up lately. So this is, these are just people, since November 19th, we've had this many people sign up in our group. So uh, if you want to sign up and check it out, right up there in the top, you can see, join our free Discord server. You can get in for free. Um, you don't get advantage, you don't get access to all the good channels in the free lounge. So if you do pay for an advantage membership, we get you into short term, medium term, long term calls. Um, you get into um, daily Bitcoin analysis that Amal is doing. And trust me, man, if you guys don't know about Amal's TA, uh, if you like mine, uh, mine looks like a crayon compared to uh, Amal's. He's, he's super sharp. So um, we've got an entire channel dedicated to margin trading. So for those of you who are able to uh, leverage and margin trade on like BitMEX, et cetera, uh, we've got a channel dedicated to my adventures with the Crypto Hopper. We have our entire Trader Talk channel. I mean, look at this, guys. There's, there's people in here talking about our trades, talking about what we're trying to do, talking about what, what our entries are, sharpening each other up, just trying to make each other better traders and uh, help each other make better decisions. So that's what we're trying to do. We'd love to have you be part of the group. If you have not done so yet, head on over and... Uh, 
jump in. So back to um, what you're saying here, CryptoL. Sorry, I was speaking of a fork of four, uh, which is a fork of Pivx. Odin blockchain. I've actually heard of Odin, Odin blockchain. I haven't done any research on it, but I am aware of it. Um, I think I saw them maybe at one of the conferences that I went to recently. Maybe World CryptoCon? I can't remember. Um, but yeah, I, I, I am aware of that one, but I don't know much about it. So happy to look into it. And uh, other than that, guys, I think that's going to wrap it up for me. Um, I really appreciate you guys all watching. Uh, if you want to do me a huge solid and help us keep uh, ranking well in the search ranks, give me a like, give me a share, retweet me on Twitter. Um, help me out. I've been remote and uh, unable to stream to multiple platforms. I've really only been able to stream to um, YouTube and not to our Facebook group, etc. So if you guys would do me a solid and share this information, uh, I would always, always appreciate it. And uh, other than that, guys, we will see you tomorrow. Keep your stop losses tight, and I appreciate each and every one of you. This is Jason for Crypto Somniac. I'm out of here.